Once our model mold piece is made, one of the pieces making up our model mold half is finished and completed, and we can get rid of the clay wall. It has served its purpose as a stand-in for a plaster wall, but now we have a plaster piece with a plaster wall to make the next piece against. I like to wait until the next day before removing this clay wall since the plaster needs a little bit of time before it's properly sturdy. It will seem firm to the touch within, you know, 30 minutes or so, but it will be prone to flexing and bending, and it'll be a little bit too crumbly. So make sure to give it a few hours to dry, preferably overnight, before you begin a new model mold piece that's going to be up against a previously made model mold piece. I don't like to cover the clay wall overnight since I'd like it to dry out before removing it. If the clay wall is nice and dry, it will come off in large pieces and leave very little residue behind. If it's wet still, it will stick to the plaster and leave you with much more cleanup to do. As you can see here, the cleanup I have to do is minimal and only really along that sharp 90 degree turn where the plaster meets the silicone surface of our mold. I would suggest not using water here as water will tend to soften up the plaster again. Not to the point where the plaster is gonna become liquid or anything like that, but it'll make it a little bit more soft. And if the clay has been allowed to dry, you shouldn't need to use water really. Make sure the silicone is cleaned really well as well. We don't need any clay left behind on our silicone piece. Finally, before making the next model mold piece, we need to Vaseline the surface of our old plaster piece to make sure the two doesn't stick together. While old plaster doesn't usually stick to new plaster, too badly anyway, there is no reason to take any chances here. While they won't bond permanently, perhaps, they are likely to bond enough to where it will be a mess to take the two apart and we are likely to break something. Carefully applying Vaseline everywhere makes sure we have no such issue. Apply Vaseline to the top surface of the plaster wall as well, as any plaster that ends up up here will easily be removable if we use Vaseline. This will later make it much easier to demold. As soon as we rasp along this top plane, any plaster from the piece we're about to make is going to pop right off and reveal to us the seam line. Since the next piece is just the same as the process we just observed and did, I decided to skip it and move on to the next piece. The next step is drilling holes that we will use to bolt the two model mold pieces into one model mold half. During casting, these will be bolted together and function as one model mold half. And during demolding, they will be unbolted from each other, letting us demold our piece much more easily. The silicone, of course, is flexible and so it can flex around some of these undercuts, but the model mold needs two pieces unbolted from each other to get around them. Drilling is easy. I like to use a drill with a high speed setting and a drill bit meant for concrete. This drill bit Seems to me to leave less of a blowout on the opposite side we are drilling. Your mileage may vary here and people swear to different drill bits with a passion. So choose your own champion with care here and take responsibility for your own actions. To bolt the two halves together, I'm just using bolts, washers and wing nuts. I prefer slightly larger bolts for some reason. I couldn't really tell you why. I feel like I have, I have less issues with bigger bolts. Washers make sure the pressure of the bolt is dispersed over a wider area, which is good. And if you don't use these, then the bolt will dig into the plaster, which is actually not as hard as you perhaps would think. Finally, I like to use wing nuts instead of regular nuts. They make taking the bolts on and off much faster and easier using just your hands. And tool-free assembly is always a plus in my book.
The bolts have to come off before the molding and when they are off the model mold pieces for the upper half comes off super easily as you can see. There's no magic to removing model molds. If the mold was designed well, they should come off easily with little pressure. Do not go very hard on your model mold as I'm sure you will demold it before the plaster has had enough time to properly dry out. Plaster can take weeks to dry out completely and won't be as strong as it potentially can be until this has happened. So a light shake and a little pull should remove the model mold if it was designed well that is. Sometimes a slight up and down movement can help the piece loosen up a little bit. Moving it up and down releases some of the suction that's created between the silicone skin and the plaster model mold piece. And once that suction is released, it's easy to remove it. With the model mold removed, we can get to the silicone, and this is really where things get a little scary and shaky. Here we have to use knives, and we have the risk of cutting wrong somewhere and damaging the silicone skin of our mold, or cutting ourselves as well and damaging ourselves, neither of which are optimal end results. So we have to pay extra close attention during this step and not rush through it. To cut the mold, I'm going to use two knives. The first knife I use is called a mold cutter's knife, silicone knife, or sometimes a jelly knife. This knife is not meant to cut all the way through the silicone down to the surface of the clay, but to create a groove, one positive and one negative in each of the silicone pieces. This way, when the mold is used for casting, the two silicone halves will register together easily and fit snugly together. To accomplish this task, it's useful to make sure you can gauge the depth of your cut. You want the registration groove to be more or less in the middle of the wall, not at the top, not at the bottom, and you can be sure of this depth if you make a little mark with a sharpie pen on the side of your blade, and then you just use that as a guide. 